Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey is into the world of the coronavirus. Of course, everybody everywhere is talking about it, but we today have a very special person that deals with viruses all the time. So I'm going to talk to my friend and those of you that have been with me know I only talk to dear We are going to talk to Dr. T at the Waikiki, at Doctors of Waikiki. Okay, you know I'd get it wrong. But <laughs> anyway, it is the Doctors of Waikiki and yes. Dr. T. He is such a, such a special person. Um, and so Dr. T is with us. He's, they've got patients stacked up, but he agreed to spend some time with us. And Dr. Yeah. T and his ukulele. Dr. T, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. And let's well, tell us you. about Dr. T before we get into the virus. Tell us about Dr. T. Well, I've been a physician, practicing physician over 25 years. I've been on two other islands in Hawaii. Uh, I used to uh, practice also in Florida, and then I was in Macedonia where I was coming here. So uh, my ancestry is from Macedonia. I was born in the United States. We moved back after I finished high school, got into medical school there, finished medical school, worked for one year there, then came back to the United States. And then I've been in the United States since, ever since. But and through the path of life, I found my way to uh, Hawaii, and I've been here over 16 years. Um, and I'm really happy here. And then I uh, opened a practice with Dr. Wu, Doctors of Waikiki, over a year ago, and we've been doing really well. It's an urgent care, and we do primary care, and we specialize in internal medicine, and we take care of patients every which way we can. And right now we all and have me to learn. at midnight. Yes, <laughs> and Marsha at midnight. And we have to deal with yes. things that come our way and what, something that's gonna come our way, it's gonna be inevitable, will be the coronavirus. No matter how hard we try, well, we're not gonna be able to because, the coronavirus from yeah. coming. So it's not a matter of when, well, let's say. It's when, you know. It, uh, well, uh, the practice that you have, the Doctors of Waikiki is in the Princess Kaiolani Hotel, which yes. means that you are primarily dealing with uh, tourists. Now, yes. you're bilingual. How many does your staff have? I, I Lots of them. I we know. have. So since, since we're our location, we deal with a lot of tourists. I'd say 60% of our business is tourists. The rest are locals. We are oriented towards the tourist industry because we have over the half the staff speaks Japanese or Japanese nationals that have you know moved here and now they work here. And then we have Chinese speaking. We have I speak Slavic languages like Macedonian, Serbian, Bulgarian. I can understand and speak some Russian and Ukrainian. Then we have Spanish speaking, Korean speaking, you know, uh, personnel that can help from all aspects of uh, different languages to help them with their care. But uh, yes, we do deal with a lot of tourists. We can do x-rays, we can do laboratory, we can have medications we can dispense, we can do sutures. We have a complimentary shuttle to pick people up in the Waikiki area and bring them to the clinic and take them home. We do house Tell calls. us about that. Shuttle, we can which go. is absolutely gorgeous. The car. Yeah, we have a Tesla Model X that comes and picks up the customers from their home. The Model X, what is it called? The Model X, the one with the gull wing doors. It's like a big, it's a big custom van made by Tesla to drive around, it's as green as you can get, and it's a really cool car because the doors open up 
and people can get as easy access to really cool ambulance. So with wheelchairs and everything, you can get in easily. Yeah, you can easily get in because it's low to the ground. Uh, we have drivers that come pick you up, help you go to your room, bring you down. And then, like I said earlier, that we do is, house calls. That I didn't know. Yeah. Well, yes, but when because what is because so many Asian to, uh, tourists are there any issues with the coronavirus? You know, people are so scared. I, I'm not sure that I understand. We've had all kind of viruses before. What? What makes this one different other than the well, padding? Only that the, the, what makes this one different is that it's new and that the body does not have immunity towards it and that we don't know how to deal with it because it's new. We don't have medications that are designed to treat it. We don't have a vaccine to try to prevent it. So, and it, and it can be unpredictable. We don't know what kind of direction this can go in. This might go in a direction where it'll run its course through the world and then go away, or it might be here to stay and might mutate and cause other problems. But the virus, the best thing we can do to deal with it is like what we've been doing normally for flu prevention and, and cough and cold prevention is washing your hands and protecting yourself from other people who are sick. If you're sick, don't go to work, stay home. Other than that, if you think you're ill, you go and see your doctor, you know, if you have a fever. But there are hot spots throughout the world currently, and a lot of them are in Asia. China, we know, Korea now, a little bit in Japan, there's Iran. We have cases in the United States. Most of them right now heavily situated in Lake, in uh, Kirkland, Kirkland, Washington, in this nursing home scenario. But there's a lot of information out there now. My, my take on the virus would be, I think there's too much panic going on because there's, there's some chance of death. Now there's chance of death for many diseases like the, like the flu. People die when they get the flu, but the percentage of mortality or chance of dying from the coronavirus, as far as we know, is a little bit higher than the flu. So what that means is people will get sick. Some people have no symptoms. Some people will get sick. Some people will get really, a small percentage of those people who get sick will get really sick. And a small percentage of those people that are really sick can die. It does not mean everyone's going to die. But, but the ordinary flu, lots of people die every year. So what's every the difference? Year. Well, so what's the, the difference, difference? There's a smaller percentage, they believe, even though we don't have conclusive data yet, there's a smaller, higher chance of death with the coronavirus. Higher chance of death. Because if, it's new or different or what? Well, we because don't know a, how to treat it. What, what you know, no, well, no. We know how to treat the flu and we know how to treat a lot of things, but still people die. The problem with this virus is it's new, meaning that humans have never had contact, as far as we know, with this virus. So we have no natural immunity. So all the things that exist in the world, viruses and bacteria that are currently out there, we've had some exposure to because of the world the way it is and people are traveling and the world's a big place, but it's gotten very small because of travel. And so things that we naturally get um, naturally get in contact with, our body forms some type of immunity. Sometimes it's really good immunity, you never get sick again. Some it's very mild, but it is some type of immunity towards this uh, other viruses. Well, coronavirus is a new virus. Humans have never had exposure to this virus. And that's why the body has a hard time harder time dealing with it than other other viruses it's a lot of, so a lot of detail to get no, into I'm, but I'm, so we is, built a natural normally we build a natural immunity to certain things like 
even though we get colds all the time, they don't kill us. It's because we've developed immunity to some parts of that cold virus. But the coronavirus, we have no, ever had exposure to. We have no immunity to the coronavirus. Oh, now, those that do get sick, is now as far as we know, this is what I've, I've learned, is that if you do get the coronavirus, your body develops an immunity and you don't get it anymore. So if that's the case, then it's gonna run its course throughout the world and it's gonna go away. Coronavirus will go away. If it mutates like some viruses can do, well then it's gonna to continue to infect humans until it stops mutating. But so far there's no evidence that it's mutating. And so it should run its course through the world and be done. Well, since you had so many patients in Asia, is, have you seen a difference in the numbers of patients from Asia? Or has it stayed the same? Are people still well, coming? Everything, everything has been the same up until recently, but this is a normal decrease in tourism that happens in March. But oh, more than okay. likely, once we get cases here in Hawaii, it's going to probably affect it's going to probably affect tourism more so. What well, when they're canceling so many events that are large right. events like the Honolulu Festival and what have, and those most of those people come from islands in the Pacific. Until now, we haven't heard of anything affecting them. Would right. that really make a difference? Those people that haven't been infected, would that really make a difference as opposed to, let's say, Italy or, or China? I don't know, Marsha. I think isolation to some degree helps, but just like the flu, it's easily transmitted. And something that's easily transmitted to other people is really hard to contain. If it was just in a room, and there was one person and it didn't escape that room, that's great. But once it gets out of that room and it affects two people, three people, four people, like anything, it's going to continue to spread. It's already in certain hotspots throughout the world. So there's no way that it's not going to continue on its course. It's a virus. They're very easily transmitted. It'd be impossible unless we could uh, isolate every human being in the world, which is not possible. When now, this area that it's what we say it started in China is one, one town. And then all of a sudden it shows up in Italy. How does it mutate or travel well, that far? People travel. Well, because people travel. So how did it get to Korea? How did it get outside of China? How did it get to the United States? You know, people travel yep. and they got, they didn't know it and they brought it and then they kiss their wife and kiss but it just seems so odd that it would would be a little town in Italy. It just seems so odd. Well, be, well Italy, like us, is a I'm, tourist attraction and people go to, I think it was Venice or Florence. I can't remember. I think it's Venice. I don't know. Somewhere in Italy. Is it Florence? Do you know? Doesn't matter. No, I don't know. It's a tourist center. And so people yes. from China, people from Korea went there. And they didn't necessarily have to have symptoms because now we know that you don't have to be have symptoms and still have the virus and you can pass the virus on to somebody else and then they can get sick and you might not be sick at all well now so, what is the difference in the um a virus like any virus as opposed to, to bacteria we get when we have a cold what what's the the difference there? Viruses are in a different category as a microorganism that causes illness in humans and animals than bacteria. And their way they survive and they're transmitted is much different than bacteria. There are some interlap between both of them, meaning, so let's look at the common cold. The common cold when it affects a human, it travels to its respiratory tract, to its nose and its mouth, and that's where it's replicated. So when you sneeze, it's actually spreading the virus 
the the cold virus to sub to uh, articles places in the room, your hands, and then somebody will either be sneezed on and get the virus in the sneeze, or I sneezed on the table and they'll touch the table with their hands and touch their mouth and get the virus that way. Bacteria tend to be in a lot of objects around us in the water. They can be on the in the dirt, but we need to have more contact with them than the virus to get sick. There are bacteria on our skin, but it's it's different. You know, viruses spread a lot easier than bacteria do in the community. They're designed to do that, and that's how they've evolved as a microorganism, as a as an entity to spread throughout the human population or the animal population, or even the bacterial population. There's viruses that attack bacteria. It's called bacteriophages. Oh. Yeah, so viruses are throughout the whole spectrum of things that are alive. They can cause disease. So, so um, bacteria are a how many different because of viruses do we have? How many different viruses? There's a family. The ones I've learned were the family of viruses that cause health problems in humans. But there are so many. There are viruses that are just for cats. There's viruses just for dogs. There's viruses that attack cows, horses, insects, bacteria. You know, so there's viruses. It's like a, it's a whole population of microorganisms that, like humans, want to survive, except they don't have a conscience. They don't have... I guess they don't have a conscience. They don't have a... <laughs> <laughs> Not one that we know of. They're very simple yeah. life forms that know how to replicate and they've de evolved to replicate in certain species. And for example, the flu virus is one, the cold virus is another, there's hepatitis virus, there's the virus that caused polio, there's viruses and there's myriad of them, but there are so many viruses out there. And there's some that cause much more health problems like the flu does currently than the coronavirus. Coro flu is still killing more people, we said this initially, than the coronavirus has. Now, will coronavirus end up killing more people than the flu? Maybe one day, maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Well. Um, now, when we first heard about this, they said that it was transmitted from bats in China. That's a delicacy, I guess, from bats to humans. Does, do they, well, I, I, well the, how would that work? The, well, the, theory, the theory is, remember I was saying that viruses can infect a lot of different things, right? So there is a bat virus, a bat cold virus. This is coronavirus. This is the, this is the theory now that this coronavirus was a virus that bats had. It was like a, their their common cold. It didn't kill them, but they would get the sniffles. You know, they're mammals like us. And they would cough. And they might have got a fever, and then they would pass, and then they would you know move on. But somehow, sometimes viruses that are for certain animals can transfer. To humans. And if that happens, then we have a trouble like we're having now with coronavirus because the body does not have immunity, never been exposed to that virus, and that's why it becomes a problem. It's not because they eat bat soup, it's because bats are sold in the market in China because it is a delicacy in China. And that's where they're assuming that in the open market, the bats were infected. And then the handlers of the bats or people that were cutting the bat meat got the virus, breathed the virus in, and then they got infected initially. And that's how it started. Then he spread it to his family and then the family to another family. And that's the theory. That's the theory. Well, there were years ago, you're too young to remember this, but years ago before we had uh, really uh, laws about handling meat. Remember the meat packers and how bad that was? 
And so we have come a long way since then, I hope. But, but at that time, were there viruses spread among the, the slaughter houses and out to the public before well, we, were, we got a handle on that? Sure, there were a lot of diseases back before, we're talking about 120, 130 years ago, there were no laws. And there was very poor hygiene in animal slaughterhouses. There was very poor hygiene for processing meat and meat products hundred some years ago. And of course, there were some illnesses that people got that handled the meat. And I'm trying to think of one that would come to mind. I can't think of any right now. But yes, there are things that could have happened back then that could have been an issue. And now the Coronavirus could be related to processing the bat meat or the bats were sick and the handler of the bats got sick. But that's where it's- hey, Yep, pick one little town in China out of as big as China is. How did they select one tiny community in China? And just like anything. Uh, who knows why? I have, who knows why? Why it started in Wuhan? I don't know. I, I've just, just, no, it, it just amazes me as big as China is with as many people, how they said this is where it started. Well, you know, it's rare. The transmission from an animal virus into a human is rare. It's not a very common thing. Oh. And so, it, you know, it's just bad luck. It's just bad luck. It's just like getting cancer. It's bad luck. And so the person handling the bats had bad luck. And the bat had just the right virus in the right time. And it happened. If that's what it is. Who knows? We don't know. But that's what we're assuming. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's what they're, they're telling us anyway. Yeah. So now... Are, there are people, at least I've read about people that had, had no symptoms and then somehow they pass it on. Yeah. How does that work? How do we pass on if we have no symptoms, we don't even know we've got it? Well, there are degrees of everything. So chicken pox. So some people get a really bad rash everywhere and get really sick and even get hospitalized when they get a chicken pox. There's a small percentage of people who died when they got chickenpox. And there are some people who, when they got chickenpox, they would just get one pock. So just like everything, it, there's a variation in how people respond to an illness or a virus or a bacteria. And that's the same thing as being true with the coronavirus. There have been no children no children have died. There are children that have gotten sick, but no children have died. And children seem to be having a very mild uh, form of the disease. They might not have any symptoms at all. So some people don't respond that strongly to the virus. And some people get a fever and some people get really, really sick and some people die. So there's a variation on the presentation. And so they still have the virus. It's just, they're not acting sick. Now, I'm going to ask you one of those questions that people get hoo hooed about. The children, young children, most of whom have had all of the vaccinations that we prescribe for, for little children, would that make a difference in how they uh, seem to handle this? Yeah. Let me put it that way. Yes. So I'll explain why. Even though they don't have a vaccine for the coronavirus, what we know is that body's immune system can be more can be more effective if you've had other immune responses to other illnesses, to other viruses or other bacteria, back viruses. And so, because of this pre-exposure to the vaccines for other other uh, viruses, they they will have a stronger immunity. 
and if they encounter other illnesses. But I doubt very much all of us have had, I don't know why that is the case for the children not getting that ill, but, but I don't think that's the case. But um, it's well, probably just the- I just wonder about the vaccination the general, period. Vaccination period help, help a lot. It'd be very foolish for us to think any differently. We were very lucky that somebody found, stumbled upon, you know, the case that people do, you know, acquire some immunity when we get vaccine vaccinated. And that's wonderful because otherwise we'd be going through this every year with different illnesses. Well, now, uh, I remember as a child, uh, people with polio that, you know, we're scared that you don't go in the pool in the summer and that um, FDR was the first one to talk about polio. And so then the vaccine comes along and now we don't see people with polio. And yeah. I remember as a child uh, that what we called whooping cough, everybody I know had it. And it was years before I could take Pepto-Bismol because you would cough so much. And when it came up, it was pink. I had nothing to do with Pepto-Bismol. These are childhood memories I remember before vaccinations were, everybody got the vaccinations. And children were sick, bumps, measles, chicken pox. Everybody around me as a child, I'm 82, so. You know, that's a long time ago as a child, but I remember those things. And I'm, I was delighted that we went through, my, all of my children went through childhood without any of those things because they all had vaccinations. So that's why I'm asking, since yeah, well, most children very lucky. Today get vaccinations. Yes, they do. Most children do. I'd say 99 to 98% of the population in the United States get vaccinations. But we were lucky that some of these viruses, like the virus that causes polio, causes immunity, and they found a way to give this to safely to humans so that we can prevent polio. It's actually, it was eradicated to some degree, completely off the face of the earth. It still pops up in undeveloped countries every now and then, but it's officially been classified as eradicated. And that's because of vaccination. So hopefully, you can have some kind of vaccine that's gonna be created for the coronavirus and do the same. Or humans natural immunity, and then nobody's gonna see coronavirus ever again. It might just run its course this one year or two and it'll be over. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes. And the, the worst part I think is the panic. I went to go to the um, shopping center and the police were actually directing traffic to get into Costco because people were buying toilet paper, rice, and spam. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, it's it not, is. It, it yeah, was awful crazy. watching this. Mm. The hoarding. Yeah, which and wait, we haven't, had, we haven't had a case yet. Wait till we get a few cases in Oahu, which we will. And it's going to be crazy. I'm, I, I, I just wish the media would stop stirring the pot as much as they are and making it much more worse than it actually is. It's bad, we need to deal with it, but don't make it like the end of the world because it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. I, but, I am, but I agree with you completely. And you know, where you see certain stores sell out and other stores, there's nobody there. And it's, right. this is just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you know, I promised you we wouldn't keep you so you could get back to work. Yeah, and, please. Thank you. I got to take care of yeah. everybody who thinks they have the coronavirus who has the flu. <laughs> well, that's the end of end virus. Now, what, what can we yeah. say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Thank you, Thank you Marcia. my dear friend, Dr. T. You are always a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you. And Thank you. You again, now tell us exactly where you are. 
We're at the Princess Kaolani yeah, Hotel, ground floor, Sheraton Princess Kaolani, on 120 Kaolani Avenue, right next to Urban Outfitters, across from the Moana Surfrider. If you live in the Waikiki area, call us at 922-2112. We'll be happy to pick you up. And we are going to start doing online care because we want to help everybody. So if people are afraid to get, they think they'll get the coronavirus or whatever coming to the office, we can actually see you in your home. Wow. Telemedicine? Yes, telemedicine this month. Oh, great. Great. Then I don't have to drive to see you. Nope. Just going to press a button <laughs> Even if on I your do phone. like seeing you. You press yeah. a button on your phone, or just like this, just like this interview. And we'll say, "Hey, Marsha, how are you doing? Do you have a fever? No. Do you need to refill your medicines? Yes. Easy. No. You know, all I can for is my million dollar shot. So that's well, that's different. yeah. Well, the million dollar <laughs> shot, I can't do it online. You'll have to come <laughs> in. <laughs> yes, but listen, sweetheart, thank you so much for spending You're this welcome. time with us, and. Tell Dr. Wu we love you and I will. Uh, we'll see you soon. Now, thank you. Before the end of the day, they will send you a link to the show and you can run it over and over and over again. Thank you so much. So, thank you, Marsha. Thank you. All right. I Take love care. You. Thank you, all your viewers. Bye.